Hey, it's Denise. Uh, Keffy and I, hello Keffy. Keffy and I are up here today um, getting ready to do some clearing down where um, I'm going to put some of my gardens in the spring. And I thought I'd pause and do a little intro um, for the yurt raising um, video that I took while we were um, in the process. So um, it's a time, lap vi time lapse video and I took it with a camera that was a little bit of an afterthought and um, kind of last minute. So I didn't familiarize myself with the camera as much as I probably should have. Um, and as a result, uh, it, it, there were a couple of surprises. Um, it, like battery life was, was one big one. Um, <laughs> I think I managed to fill in most of the gaps with some still photography um, as well. Um, but you know, we might be missing one or two things here and there because it's a little hard to manage two cameras and oh, I don't know, participate in my own yurt raising. So anyway, um, I just wanted to let you know that um, what you're going to see is a combination of time-lapse um, video and, uh, and some photography. And hopefully you'll get a good sense for all the pieces and parts and steps that, um, that we went through to put the yurt up. Hope you enjoy the video. Kepi's enjoying my face. <laughs> the first thing that goes up is the door. It acts as an anchor for everything else that we put together. Next were long strips of laminate known as bandboard. It's what we affixed the lattice to, which becomes the walls. The lattice had been in storage in three parts, so it had to be reassembled so we could put it up and attach it to the bandboard. And ta-da! Walls! Once the walls were up and secured in place on the bandboard, we used a panel hoist to lift the center ring and hold it in place while we secured the roof supports. Shannon from Blue Ridge Yurts held things steady while Clint, one of my fabulous neighbors helping that day, secured the first two roof supports into the door frame. Shannon's wife Adele and I handed the remaining supports up to him, slipping their notched ends onto the cable we'd run around the top of the lattice, and Shannon secured them into the center ring. Additional wall supports were added and affixed to several of the roof beams. These will help hold the yurt shape and keep it stable in storms. The frame was complete. Next we had to get the cover in place. The three fabric layers are built from the inside out, starting with a smooth white layer for aesthetics. Shannon passed the folded fabric up through the center ring and we used poles to unfurl it over the frame, then straightened it into place. The middle layer is an insulating fabric with a reflective coating. And finally, the outermost layer is a waterproof welded acrylic laminate. The yurt walls are covered only with the insulation and laminate layers. The insulation is zip tied to the cables supporting the roof beams after about a million tiny adjustments to align it with the window openings in the outer layers. All throughout the process, Shannon painstakingly nudged things into place so everything had an optimal fit. The last structural step was to tighten everything down with a cable running through clips at the bottom of the laminate walls. This is where that strange circular platform sitting on top of the deck comes into play. The sides of the yurt are drawn down tightly over the platform's rim, creating tension on the frame to hold everything in place and reduce wind resistance. Tolerances for the deck are tight. It has to be built right. Shannon has horror stories of decks needing to be fixed or even rebuilt before he could install the yurt. Kudos to my builder for sticking with the plan, even if it did baffle him a little. At last, we were ready for the finishing touches. 
the front door and a small awning to divert rain away so I could enter and exit without getting dumped on. And yurt achieved. A huge dog-kissed thank you to Shannon from Blue Ridge Yurts and his wife Adele for their hard work, expertise, and project management. We really couldn't have done it without you. And to my kind and generous neighbors, Clint, Arthur, and John, who helped with the installation, as well as Angela and Cynthia, who made sure we were all well fed, the challenges of raising a yurt were significant enough. Raising it during COVID would have been impossible without you. Keffy and I love you all.